Hello and welcome. My name is James Rice and I'm cybersecurity faculty here at Mohawk Valley Community College. And the purpose of this video is to get you introduced to the mini hacks challenges that are going to be available here in the CAE sandbox. Now, mini hacks really refer to kind of an entire family of challenges that we've broken down into various tiers. So what I'm going to introduce here is kind of show you the, the tier one version of a mini hack. But let's start kind of with the with the spirit of what is a mini hack all about. Now, in our local competition, what we've really noticed is many students have to make the transition from the uh, from challenges that they've taken on in the classroom, such as labs or tests. And when you come over to a competition, things are just a little bit different. Even though some of the, the fundamental activities you're doing are the same, uh, there are things like I have to check a scoreboard and I have to work on multiple uh, virtual machines all kind of simultaneously. So things are just a bit more dynamic when you're in a competition. And so the, the purpose of the mini hack is really to break the ice with those elements to be able to get you working past and working through some of those challenges. And, and, and a lot of it kind of comes down to just spatial awareness. You kind of have a digital spatial awareness you have to deal with when you're, when you're uh, in a competition such, such as this one. So um, I'd like to kind of share a screen here to show you where, where I'm going with this and, and say, okay, this is one of the, the, the topologies that are going to be thrown at you, uh, specifically with our tier one mini hack. And so the idea is with this type of challenge, similar to the actual competition, you're going to have multiple virtual machines that you and your teammates are responsible for. And so let's start getting you a bit of practice with that. Let's see what is it like to have multiple virtual machines and have to use them to uh, uh, accomplish some task. Um, the other idea, like I said, you have to start getting used to is the idea of a scoring service. So there are going to be many virtual machines during a competition to which you do not have direct access to them, but that doesn't mean that they're irrelevant. You, you have to learn how do I go out and access some other machine using one of my competition VMs. And so what you kind of see here in this diagram in green is these are the machines that have been assigned to your team. And when you're on a competition, you're going to be on some team. So that will be one of your first tasks is to figure out what are the machines that have been assigned to me on this team and try to get acclimated with them. Also realize that you have some larger scale objectives. What are the objectives that I have to achieve? And start to have some awareness, some concept of what else exists outside of my team infrastructure. And so specifically for this tier one uh, uh, mini hack, what we're looking to try to have you do is let's use some neutral machines, some, some Kali machines. These are machines in red here that, that are not actually being scored, but they are useful tools for you to use on your team to test things sort of from an external side of your network as well as from an internal side of your network. So these are some machines that you should probably start with to say, let's get these online and now I can have some of the tools necessary to troubleshoot and set up the infrastructure to which really matters, the things that I would actually be scored on. And so in this tier one mini hack, what you're actually being scored on is two of the most fundamental things that you're gonna encounter at a competition. Number one is gonna be, of course, a core router. So you, uh, on the services side to, to a competition, are gonna be responsible to making services available, just like a business might have to make things like a website available, as along with other services. And so your core router, of course, is gonna be one of the, the critical things you're gonna to have to manage to allow external traffic to come in, the appropriate internal traffic to get out, and allow it to be able to communicate with scoring services. Now, I wanna emphasize in this particular diagram that this is just one kind of micro example of the things that you're going to experience on, on the actual competition day. And so, you know, your, your, your mileage is gonna vary. The IP addresses don't get emotionally attached to them, right? Things are going to change. And so you, you want to really start focusing in on the ideas, not necessarily let me memorize all the different numbers. And we, quite a, a, of course, have that built into this, this idea of a mini hack. And so you'll see here on this diagram that, yes, I've got a core router, I've got these external machines, and then specifically for this one, you've got this web service here sitting in like orange or brown. It's meant to be an internal website to which you'll have to pass the traffic through out to the scoring server. So you have a variety of virtual machines. Some of them are really just there for testing. Some are there for scoring. And you're going to have to use these machines to be able to check into the scoring server to test your own stuff is actually working, configure things appropriately, etc. Now here in gray is where we are going to be throwing the instructions at you. What are the instructions? What are the things you're actually going to be scored on? And, and what are the things that you should be focused on to kind of double checking for yourself internally and then also confirming through the scoring server itself? 
Um, and so specifically for this one, they say, all right, our scoring server right now in the tier one mini hack system currently resides at an IP address 172.20.0.1, this black machine that's sitting out there. And that is what is going to have the official interface where you can check to see, is my stuff officially reporting in? And right now to start your external Kali machine, this is one that it's usually going to come configured. It's not going to be configured exactly to your topology. And so we'll see that in just a second. You will have to correct it, but it does come with an IP address where many of these other machines, they don't come with any networking, the services, they might be, they might be installed, but they're not configured. They're not turned on. And that of course is a big part of this challenge. Can you take some practice to be able to configure the services and then confirm that they're actually checking in with the scoring server. So uh, let's pop over to the environment and see what this sort of looks like for real. So uh, what I've opened up here in, in the background is with the mini hack challenges and as well as with the competition, of course, you're gonna have a variety of virtual machines that you're gonna be responsible for. And so I've opened them all up sort of here in a window so you can start to appreciate like, yeah, having the mental discipline and having that mental awareness to say, okay, what machine am I on? Where is it in my topology and what am I trying to accomplish with it? These are all really critical tasks that usually you just don't necessarily get in a lab exercise. They're much more focused. And so we're trying to we're trying to raise some of your awareness and some of your thought process here. So specifically here on the one on the left, this, this is the one that actually is my Kali external machine. And so uh, uh, as with uh, many of the things here in the sandbox, you have a, a default username of just sandbox as well as a password of password uh, is something that should get you logged into the machine. And so from here, we could now take on to say, all right, what is the challenge all about? How do I confirm? Let me check in with the scoreboard to see if it's all there. And as I mentioned, I have tossed in an IP address for this one already. It's not correct, let's say, according to the topology, but you do at least start with something. Um, so let's pop open a terminal and see what I got. So if I do just a quick IPA, right, to check my IP address, you'll see I've currently tossed you at least on this initial machine at 172.20.0.2. So it doesn't exactly follow what we're supposed to be doing in the topology. And of course, that's something you can come in here and correct. And just for clarity's sake, you'll see I did set this in a static way using the slash etc slash network slash interfaces file. Because of course, there's more than one way you could configure an IP address. I'm just saying this is how I've currently configured the machine to deploy it to you. So, you know, feel free to change things as necessary to make it more consistent with your topology. But at least it should be configured, it should be online, and it should allow you to immediately go and check the scoreboard. So this is something you should do anytime you're starting a mini hack, whether it's a tier one mini hack or whether it's one of the higher level uh, tiers of mini hacks, that using this, you should take one of your machines and see what are the official instructions for this assignment. Now I kind of gave you a little bit of a preview here using this PDF that I've pulled up, but through the scoreboard, you'll also be able to see this. And the scoreboard is not a machine that you have direct access to, but the scoreboard of course is running a web page. So if we go into the upper left here of our Kali machine, I can click on applications and just pop open a default web browser. Sure, it should open up Mozilla for us. And the very first link I bookmarked here is the website itself. It's the 172.20.0.1. This is something you should be able to reach directly out of the box. And so if I click on this link here, it'll go in, it'll load up the page. And it's possible, uh, again, all of this is in a contained, uh, disconnected from the internet environment. So you might get some type of certificate warning. You know, you can just accept that. It's, it's using a self-signed certificate since it's not in a in the live fashion. Not, not something you'll have to do on the actual competition day, but nevertheless, you know, you'll get some memes sort of thrown at you here for for some of the lulls and and of course it's like okay how do I actually check my scoreboard let, let me let me get used to seeing what does the official infrastructure think of my current progress all right and so anyways this is this is what you're going to be hit with immediately now on competition day you'll be able to log into the scoreboard and that's what will give you information specific for your team so it is a good thing to kind of get used to. Let's go to the scoreboard. Let's get logged into the scoreboard and start to check my progress for the various things that I'm scored on. And so I could do that from the start. I could click on my little login button here. And most of the time you're gonna have a team number. You'll be team one, team two, team 12, team 15, who knows? We're in the sandbox, so again, we're kind of just trying to keep all the credentials as simple as possible for now. So your team is just sandbox for now with a password of, again, just password. And so we can get logged in as our particular team and see what has been assigned to us in this environment. 
And so here's that here's that uh, very very similar PDF style thing that I was just looking at. You'll see the initial page here at 172.20.0.1 slash dashboard. So this shows up after you've logged in. You'll get to see the exact information that's specifically been assigned to you. Again, we're deploying here a tier one mini hack challenge. So there's that diagram. It's it's all nice, nice. I can, and now I have to understand like, yeah, I've been assigned a specific team number. And just like on competition day, I don't know what that team number is going to be until competition day, but I need to get some practice following this topology. And so you can see up here in the upper left, the, team, the, the scoreboard will tell you what team number you've been assigned, and you need to take that number and apply it to your different infrastructure in order to be scored appropriately. You can't just make your services available wherever the heck you feel like it. All right, you, you definitely, a lot of these things are going to be scored on specific IP addresses, and it's up to you to be able to accommodate those requests. All right, now, uh, the other important aspect of the scoreboard, of course, is to check in to see, uh, according to the scoreboard, according to the official infrastructure, is my service actually online right now? And so you'll be able to switch over to the scoreboard tab to be able to kind of see, all right, is the infrastructure online or is according to the scoreboard no that this isn't actually online and so you'll see here it'll show up in red if according to the scoreboard well your router's not responding the website isn't responding or the website is not being passed through the router correctly and these different checks were the the things that i had as the instructions in gray uh, oops, or if I go back to that that dashboard view, you'll have here in scoring, it'll have the appropriate bullets to say, here's the way that we're evaluating you for this particular event, uh, for this particular mini hack. And so these are the things that are critical that you're going to have to follow. And so specifically for this mini hack, like I said, you're going to have to get your router online, you're going to have to get the web server online, it's going to have to pass traffic externally so that when the scoring server tries to request that traffic externally, the web server responds. And specifically for this one, as with many services, the type of content you deliver. In other words, what's actually on your web page? So in this one, we're saying you also have to include the string team and then whatever team number you're on, just like this, team and then the number. So for this particular instance, I was assigned team number 247, kind of chosen at random. And so that's the content that I'm going to have to make available on my web server when I set up my website. Somewhere on that page is going to have to say team and then 247, at least for this instance. So these are the things that you're going to have to check. And a lot of this is really meant to prepare you for the service challenges that are going to be thrown at you on, on competition day. You're going to have a variety of infrastructure that it's your job to set it up, secure it, make it available, make these different services respond accordingly with the appropriate content. And then also keep in mind that, yes, there is going to be an offensive element working against you, right? This is going to be a contested environment on the competition day. We're going to have a red team that's going to be attacking you. And so that's another thing, another element of of the competition that's very different than the lab. A lot of the times we're, we're practicing getting things configured and then once it's done, okay, it's done. It's like, yeah, okay, but, but on competition day, you're gonna wanna try to keep an eye on what is the status of things right now. And you can kind of see here the little legend, it'll change to green when it's running. But just kind of realize, like, on competition day, I might make some of those lights go green, and then the offensive team is going to come in and wipe that out, right? They're going to take my web server offline. They might attack my router. And so I'm going to have to have some practice securing these and making them a little bit more resilient to attack. And so that mentality is something we're trying to encourage in the idea of a mini hack. So let's, let's first just start, especially with this Tier 1 mini hack, let's just start. Let's work with a few different virtual machines, get some services online, practice passing the traffic through your router correctly with the appropriate content and then coming over to the scoreboard and seeing according to the scoreboard did i do it correctly and then in future tiers we can continue to challenge the idea of what happens if i had other services what happens if the machine was not something that existed inside my topology right if i go back to the dashboard what if the machine didn't exist with something that i have direct console access to what if it's out there and i have to go out and i have to find it and i have to capture it and bring it back all right. So there's a lot of ideas like that of how can I use things like my Kali machines, things I have direct access to, to go acquire an, a, another external machine. Others such as the router, or in this case, we're giving you an Ubuntu server to, or an Ubuntu computer to be used as your web server. These are things you have direct console access to and, and you can go in and configure them as necessary. But, but that's the mentality. Let's start with getting things working, getting things configured. We'll do it in a 
uncontested or let's say a less contested way, check in with the scoreboard and, and keep that keep that idea going, that mentality going. Uh, also realize as you get into some of the capture the flag style challenges, uh, many of them will also be submitted here through the same interfaces. You'll be able to click on the challenges tab and this is where your capture the flag stuff will appear as well. Right now, of course, in the tier one mini hack, there is no capture the flag element to it. You simply have the scoreboard. You have here, you are logged in and you can go to your dashboard to see what your specific assignment is. And if you want some, uh, you know, some little meme type stuff, you can always hit, hit the home tab and kind of go back. So anyways, this is what you should kind of be doing to start. Log into your scoreboard, log into your machines, launch up your Cali machine, view that topology. Let's practice following a topology. Let's practice checking in with a scoreboard to see what things are like. And then let's start to have that mental awareness that things I configured, you know, who knows what it's going to happen in, in the next 30 minutes or in the next hour. Like I, I might have to double check, go back and reconfigure things and try to secure them a little bit better. But this is a good place to start. So let's start here. Let's start to see what some of the next tiers might evolve to be. Get a bit of practice, you know, maybe sit down with a friend or two as we go through some of these assignments and, and practice, you know, opening up a topology on one screen and then opening up another tab to say, here's where I'm actually doing the work. You know, these are all really, really good things to be able to get to the point to do. And, and, and lastly, I'll just reemphasize, you know, you're given these extra Kali machines to help you with the testing. So if you think you've got something configured correctly, well, why don't I come over to one of these other Kali machines and, and open it up, Look like, see what it looks like in a browser, right? O open it up and try pinging these machines. And so use these for your testing. And of course, you can always have the scoring server as your official source of confirmation. So as always, you can send us some emails, give us some suggestions as to what's working, what's not working. And uh, 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 as always, we'd be happy to help and respond to that. So have some fun, though. Break some virtual machines and hopefully learn a few things along the way.